Welcome to Night's Arcade, I'm Sleepless Night, and I'm going to share a few things I think might be helpful if you're just starting Windbound, or are planning to. This is more of a list of beginner's tips for the most part, so if you've played a lot of it already, you probably know most, if not all of them, but you might find one that's useful in there. If you've seen my review of Windbound, you'll know that I wasn't the biggest fan of the game, despite it having many elements I tend usually to enjoy. But just because I didn't enjoy the game doesn't mean you aren't going to, and since I was lucky enough to get almost two weeks to play this game in advance of release, I figured I'd share with new players seven things I wish I had known before starting the game. Number one, save often. The survival mode in Windbound will reset your progress to the beginning of the game if you die. But even if you play in the easier story mode, you will lose current chapter progress along with your boat and everything on it if you die. Unfortunately, saving the game won't help you that much because there is no option to load a save. Story mode simply reloads you at the beginning of the chapter with no option to choose reloading a save point, and survival mode does the same thing but it sends you all the way back to the beginning of the game. But if you are really attached to that boat you have lovingly crafted for the last three chapters, and you reach a point where you are, for example, starving to death far from land, and you just know you aren't going to make it to the next island, you can exit the game, restart it, and choose continue to begin at the last save point you made. Number two, avoid the reefs. Now, I'm sure this will go without saying for most of the sailors out there, or in fact for most people with common sense, but while you're sailing around in Windbound, there is an extra danger to be found among those tiny little brightly coloured coral reefs just beneath the water, or occasionally peeping out of the waves as the waves wash over them. And while this might be a scuba diver's paradise, we aren't on vacation in Indonesia now. And if your boat hits those, not only will it receive damage, but little tiny creatures called crobsters will often jump from the reef onto your boat and proceed to take it apart while you run around like a sheepdog on an acid trip trying to get them before they get you. Number three, smash rocks into smaller rocks. The sling is one of the first weapons you will craft in Windbound, and while it's more or less useless for larger creatures, and quite hard to get the hang of hitting smaller, faster creatures with, that is only true when you're using single rocks for ammunition. As soon as you possibly can, craft a hammer. This can then be used to smash those single big rocks into lots of smaller rocks to create scatter rock ammo, the sling version of buckshot. This is great for hitting smaller creatures like silk moors and those pesky crobsters I talked about before. You don't have to be nearly as accurate with it, and it is by far the fastest, easiest, and most efficient way of catching fish in this game. If you can't catch a fish with scatter ammo, I'm guessing you're probably trying to kill a leaf, or maybe a rock that just looks a bit like a fish. Try again. Number four, don't pick it up until you need it. Although inventory management can be an absolute nightmare in the early stages of this game, I am talking here specifically about food. Food in your inventory will spoil incredibly quickly, so carrying more of it than you need is a complete waste of time and inventory space. However, if you kill and skin a creature, for example, but leave the meat where it is until you are ready to eat it or leave the island, it won't spoil at all as far as I've been able to see, and I have tested it a couple of times. Which brings us to tip number five. Check the stack. When collecting items that will stack in your inventory, the most degraded item will always show at the top of the stack. So, when you look at your inventory, just because a stack of three pieces of raw meat, for example, shows they are degraded almost to the point of being useless, that doesn't mean all the pieces in that stack are necessarily in the same condition. 
The one in the worst condition will be shown at the top, so drop that one, or cook it, to see the condition of the one underneath before deciding you don't have enough usable food for the upcoming sea crossing. Number 6. Collect sea shards early. See those little shiny glittery blue things? Those are sea shards. You can get them from here, or by smashing these pretty little blue jars. And the best piece of advice I can give you is collect as many of these as you can on the very first map. The maps in Windbound get progressively larger with each chapter, and the first one is really quite small. There are several islands, but they're all fairly close together. It's not much more than a training area, really. So while you're learning the basics of the game, before you move on to the next chapter, explore as much of this first archipelago as you can and collect every sea shard you can find. Now, it pays to keep an eye on the amount you're collecting, because you probably won't need more than 500, but better to overdo it than to come up short, because once you go to this island and put your shiny pendant into this little keyhole, that chapter is closed. You can't go back again, and between each chapter, you will have the chance to give an offering of sea shards in return for a special item to help you on the rest of your journey. Now, a lot of the time, these might be perks that will make you more resistant to poisons or perhaps greater stamina while swimming, but occasionally you will find things like an unbreakable bow or an unbreakable spear, which might be much more useful in the long run. There are perks you can choose which allow you to have two, and then progressively from there, perhaps even three blessings at the same time, but most of the time, you can only have one blessing active at once, and the blessings you can choose appear to be randomised. So there's no guarantee you'll find a useful weapon later on, or that you'll find the same ones if you go back and repeat that chapter to collect more sea shards. You only get one chance at each chapter, and for the rest of the game you'll probably always have sufficient sea shards. But make sure you have plenty for the first shrine, because if that special weapon comes up and you can't afford it, you will probably not see it ever again. And finally, number 7. Health resets. Normally, you need to worry all the time about your health and stamina in this game because you never know how far the next island is or what you might find when you get there. But this isn't true of the island at the end of the chapter. If you're ready to head towards the keystone at the end of the level and you know you can make it that far at least without dying, don't worry about going back to get more food before continuing, because both your health and stamina bars will reset to full once you put the pendant in the keystone. So if you can make it there, you should be perfectly fine until you find food on one of the islands in the next chapter. Thank you for watching, that's all from me, but you can catch up with me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, Discord or Twitch using the links in the video description or on my channel header. If you want to catch me live, I stream every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday over on Twitch. But in the meantime, leave a like if you found this video helpful, subscribe if you want to see more from me in the future, and ring the bell to be notified whenever I post new content. But until next time, from Night's Arcade, this is Sleepless Night, saying nighty-night.